Hello, in today's video I'm going to show you the drumming bits for Bill Withers' amazing song Lovely Day. Uh, it's very popular and famous, I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, drums are provided by session legend Russ Kunkel, who's played not only with Bill Withers, but with people like Joni Mitchell, Linda Ronstadt, James Taylor, Bob Dylan, lots of uh, legends. He's played on a bunch of uh, country stuff, La Love It, uh, Emmylou Harris, a uh, guy who's had an amazing career. And the drum part in this uh, song is very cool. And it's got some interesting bits. It's funky and it's laid back and it sounds fat and 70s y and all warm and fuzzy for me anyway. There's four bits to this song as far as the drumming is concerned. We've got the intro, which involves just the hi hat and the bass drum. Then we've got a verse groove, a slight variation in the bridge, and then we've got a chorus groove. They're all pretty much the same, there are small changes from one part of the song to the next. Let's start with the intro. Where better to start, you may ask? We've got a 16th note single stroke pattern on the hi-hat and bass drum accompanying that, and it sounds something like this. It's pretty straightforward. First of all, on the hi-hat, as I was saying, we're mixing some regular soft strokes, non-accented notes, and accents. The non-accented notes we're going to play by playing the tip of the sticks on the bow of the hi-hat cymbals. Depending on your hi-hats, somewhere about halfway along between the center and the edge. Usually sounds okay, maybe uh, your cymbals might sound nice a little bit closer to the edge. Uh, don't press too hard on the hi-hats. Again, this digital abomination doesn't really reflect the sound of the hi-hats that well to demonstrate, but if you push too hard, you get this nasal sound. So keep your foot firm, but not too firm on the hi-hats. And your non-accented notes should sound something more or less like that. To play the accent, I recommend striking the edge of the cymbals with the shoulder of the stick. That's the bit where it sort of tapers in. You don't need to add any extra energy. You don't need to add, put any muscle into it to produce the accent. All you need to do is change the angle of the stick so it strikes the edge of the cymbals. And that's enough to give you a nice accent that's distinct from the non-accented notes without having to do any work, really. It's quite simple. If you haven't done it before, I recommend you practice doing it a little bit. Accent, not accent. Try and get a feel for those different positions that you strike the cymbals in. Is this stick in the way? You can get this up, down motion. And it's very relaxed, very easy way to produce a different accent. Play some sixteenths. get yourself used to the, the motions required to produce those accents. Now, the pattern in this song, in the intro, and uh, it, it's the same uh, rhythmic pattern that the, the groove follows as well, is this. One and two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a and a two E and a three E and a four E and a and a two E and a three E and a four E and a right, right, left, right, left, right, 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 left, right, left, right. It's quite a good little uh, pattern to play to get yourself used to playing these accents on the hi hat. So if you master this, it's a good introduction to playing 16th note hi hat accented pattern. Practice that until you can play it at the speed of the song. So and a two E and a three E and a four. And a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and three E and a four E and a bum 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 Take your time with it, go slowly, and focus on good form. I know you always want to just jump in there and do it, and that's not a bad impulse, but if you want to get the hang of playing things and make it sound clean and really good, focus on 
good form, learn how to get your hands to move correctly between the accented and non-accented notes so that it sounds really smooth and you have a really nice contrast between the louder and softer notes and do that really slowly and once you've got that sounding good and feeling good and you know that you're relaxed and you've internalized that rhythm then try and speed it up and it'll sound really really good. Next we're going to add the bass drum to the first four accented notes in the hi-hat pattern like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay. Now note that one of the notes, one and two E, the two E, is a left-handed accent and it coincides with the bass drum. And when that happens, you may find you get a flamming and it doesn't happen accurately. If that's the case, again, I know I say these things millions of times, but slow yourself down and practice it at a very relaxed pace until you know that you can get the left hand accent and the right foot bass drum to happen exactly together. Again, if you're playing a different kit, left handed or otherwise, uh, obviously adjust according to what suits you. So let's just play through that slowly and carefully a few times. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one and two E and a three E and a four E and a and a three E and a four E and a. Nice and relaxed. Finally, we're going to add the bass drum on the R of the second beat. That means the fourth sixteenth note. So we've got the E accented and there's a bass drum there. And then we've got the R not accented. There's a bass drum there. And lining up the bass drum with the left hand again may be a little bit tricky. So as always, go slowly. Keep yourself nice and relaxed. When it's all lined up, then speed up again. OK, so the two would be two E and R. Okay, I really lay into that. Two E and R. Two E and R. Two E and R. Putting it all together, the pattern sounds like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a and closer to the speed of the song. So let's look at the verse, it sounds like this. We've got a fairly straightforward eighth note groove. We're playing eights on the hi-hat, one and two and three and four and we've got the snare on two and four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Remember to keep the hi-hat really light, tip of the stick on the bow of the cymbal. Bass drum goes one and two E and a three, four, a one and two E and a three, four, a one and two. And a three, four, a one, and two, e and a three, four. Okay, so we have hi hat and bass together on the one and the and in the first beat of the bar. One and should be pretty straightforward. Then we've got two, e and a. Uh. If you're new to playing sixteenth notes in between the hi hat notes in a groove, this might be a little bit challenging. So let's look at this slowly. We've got two. E and R. On the two, 
snare drum and hi-hat exactly together at the same time. Then immediately after on the E, we have a bass drum on its own. Then we have hi-hat on the and and another bass drum on the A. Uh. Two, E, and, A. Uh. Two, E, and, A. Uh. Two, E, and, A. Uh. Sometimes you'll find that your right hand wants to kind of follow the bass drum, so you might be going two, E, and, A, uh, something like this. Two, E, and, A. Uh. The right foot is pulling the right hand with it. So if this is new to you, if it's not new to you, then you don't care, and that's fine. You can get on with it. But if this is new to you, you're going to practice this nice and slowly. Two, E, and, A. Uh. And then when that starts feeling okay, you add the one, and. One, and. Two, E, and, A. Uh. And you can just practice that. One, and, two, E, and, A. Uh. 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 Don't worry, it might take you a little while, but that's okay. It takes us all a long time and lots of repetition to get the, the, these things right. One and two e and a. Next, we have three and. Bass drum on the three with the hi-hat and the hi-hat on its own on the and. Three and. Then we have four and a uh, and another bass drum on the sixteenth. Four and a. Uh. And again, watch out, your right hand might want to follow. Four and a. Uh. You may want to do that. So the best thing to do is put the whole groove together in sequence and play it slowly and carefully. Again, I know I'm repeating myself, but it seems to be required. So we're going to go one and two e and a three and four and a one and two e and a three four and a one and two e and a three and four and a one and two e and a three and four and a one and two e and a three and four and a one and two e and a three four and a one and two e and a three and four and a one and two e and a three and four and a once you got the hang of it try playing it at the speed of the song one and two e and a three and four and a one and two e and a three and four and two e and a three and four and a one and two e and a three and four and a one and three and four uh 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 um uh 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 okay get that motoring along nicely and you'll know when it's happening because you'll be able to play that very smoothly keeping the eighth notes on the hi-hat very very consistently they don't really need to change you'll be able to play the snare drum at a consistent level so it's you know got a hefty uh, sound to it and also you'll have a nice consistent bass drum we're trying to get sort of fairly equal sound on each component of the drum kit and not really change the dynamics there too much at the end of every fourth bar in the verse we've got an open hi-hat on the four and and then we're not going to play the bass on the the art of the four so the last of a four bar phrase would be one and two e and a three and four and. Okay, so if I play a couple of four bar phrases, it sounds like this one and two e and a three and four and a one and two e and a three and four and two e and a three and four and a one and two e and a three and four and one and two and four and a one and two e and a three and four and a one and two e and a three and four and two e and a three and four. In the bridge, there's a little bit of a change. We start to look at the groove as a kind of two bar phrase with an addition of a bass drum on the end of three in the first bar of the two bars. And then we're gonna open the hi-hat at the end of the two bars on the four and. So it'll be like this. One and two e and a three and four and a one and two e and a three and four. And after the open hat again, we're not playing the bass drum on the four and ah. After that open hat, we have a sense of space there. The chorus is a two bar groove, and we're gonna play the same bass drum pattern that we played in the intro. It's slightly simpler than the verse or the bridge. 
we are going to play an open hi-hat on the four with the snare in the first bar of every two bars that we play in this pattern. And then with the hi-hat, we've got two options. We can either play straight eighth notes or we can play an eighth and two sixteenths. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a three and a four and a. Let's look at the eighth note option first. So it goes one and two and a three and four and one and two and a three and four and and two and a three and four and one and two and a three and four. And if you want that longer hi hat sound, you leave out the four and one and two and a three and four one and two and a three and four one and two and a three and four one and two and a three and four. I would tend to, to do it that way, to leave out the forehand. I like having that little bit of breathing room with the hi-hat. And especially if you're playing in a, a situation where, say, you're playing with the guitarist and the guitar is giving you this chicky, chicky, chicky kind of sound, uh, you might not feel that you have to have the forehand hi-hat sound there. Uh, alternatively, if you're playing, say, I don't know, with bass, piano and drums, uh, you might feel like you need to keep that going or keep that eighth note going. It's down to you to figure out what sounds right, I guess, for the circumstances that you're playing in. For the fiddlier option of the hi-hat on the one and a two and a three and a four and a, it sounds like this. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three, four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one, two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a Again, I will tend to omit the forehand on the first bar uh, if I'm playing this. I think it sounds better just to allow the hi hat open sound a little bit more space. So it would sound like this: one and a two and a three and a four, one and a two and a three and a four and a one, two and a three and a four, one and a two and a three and a four and a. And a faster speed, especially that's uh, more effective still. One and three and three and four. One and three and three and four. Lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day. So that's that lovely day by Bill Withers. I hope you found this useful, entertaining, and even maybe managed to learn how to play the song as a result of watching this video. Let me know what you thought of it, if there's anything I could have explained better. Did it drag on too long? Do I talk too much? Do I sing too much? God help me. Uh, and so on and so forth. I'm interested in hearing feedback, especially since uh, my channel is still relatively embryonic. Uh, meanwhile, please do the thumbs up thing, like, subscribe, um, whatever it is you're supposed to do. Uh, follow me and uh, wait and see what comes next. Uh, now you can go away and practice.